Good evening, everyone. It's an honor to be here with Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra because his movies are the ones that I have seen, I think, over and over. Rang De Basanti is one I saw many, many times. And that's something that I don't do very often. They touch a chord with you because I think they're made with such passion and sincerity that comes across in the movies. But we're not here today to talk about your movies. We're here today to talk about his book. It's called The Stranger in the Mirror. It's a wonderful book. I received it a day and a half ago. I finished it already. And that tells you how compelling a read it is. It's a wonderfully, honestly, very brutally raw book. And uh, kudos on having this book out. As a creator, as a storyteller, when does a storyteller decide that I want to tell the sto my story, my own story? What made you take the decision to do this? Um, hi, hi everyone. Thanks for coming. And yeah, really good to be among everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, so um, uh, I made my first film uh, in 2001. It was released then, so uh, it, it was called Ax, made with Mr. Bachchan, Manoj, Ravina, Nandita, among some amazing talented artists. Uh, Guzar Bhai wrote the songs. And uh, before Ax, I was making um, advertising films and before that advertising and so on, some many things. So, uh, I've seen Ax only once after it was made because uh, it's very difficult to revisit and see or uh, it's full of faults and all that. All the films, not just Ax. And um, uh, I realized that yeah, this direction is fun to me, since it was my first film. Uh, and I'm able to relate to the technicians. Technique actually came to me very uh, naturally. I had never thought, uh, I don't think about technique. So it's not that camera is here, what is lens, what is going to be shoot in the morning, what is going to happen. Even uh, I was relating uh, very well to the actors and they were great actors, Manoj, Amit Ji, Ravina, Nandita and was able to extract uh, performances which were not, uh, which were out of the box as such. But in hindsight, I realized that uh, uh, the real hero of the film is the writing of the film. What we see in the poster is something else. So, uh, that is where the film is born. And uh, writing for movies and writing for otherwise is very different. And I was not even uh, writing those days. So I decided that if you want to make a film, you have to learn to write. So I started reading. I had never gone to a film school, uh, never assisted anybody. In fact, the first time I saw a camera was in my own shoot, when I hired it. The first time I felt it, touched it and all, uh, correctly. Um, then, um, I was also editing a lot uh, in London for my ad films. So I used to take my films there for editing and it was very new age. Technology was new, all that. So it felt that uh, karna should And there I chanced upon a lot of film books. You know, uh, I was editing in a place called Soho and on one side there was Virgin. Other side there was HMV. And these were like four, four, five, five floor uh, buildings full of movies, music and in the basement they used to have books. So I started reading about screenplay. I realized that I don't know uh, the S or the A or the beginning or the zero also uh, of screenplay writing and what the hell is screenplay writing. So I started reading about movies, watching movies, a lot of world cinema. You know, used to have a lot of time on my hands then. Um, and started uh, teaching myself through these books and through the wonderful masters. And started writing Rangde Basanti at the same time. So, uh, 
it kind of worked out and uh, one of the books uh, uh, one of the authors was Sid Field. He's a guru of screenplay writing in Hollywood. Now, old man is no more. And uh, I kind of, in my heart, declared him as my guru. So, any bookshop I used to go to, five out of ten books used to be his on the art of screenplay writing. When I came back, used to come back, I used to hunt for you know, books on our films, my favorite films. Doha Ke Bara Haat Ho Gaya, Pyaasa Ho Gaya, Bandini, Sujata. Uh, even the modern day classics and, and my favorite films, and none of them were available. Okay. And uh, we were not connected to through Amazon and, and you know, uh, even there you could not hunt for those books. So all you had to do was ask somebody who's traveling from abroad, but then you would get European cinema or you would get uh, Hollywood or you would get Japanese uh, uh, cinema or uh, Oriental cinema. Uh, very little on Chinese cinema uh, at that point of time. But Indian cinema was non-existent and the only books you could pick up were about personalities. You know, you would find a book on Amitabh Bachchan, that also far and few, or, or you know, uh, things like that would like sell as such. And I was dying to understand what was the journey for uh, of the filmmaker, of the author, why he or she, they made the film, what was going through them, uh, what was the idea, where they started from, where they ended, all those things, you know, they were missing, which I was seeing in Kurosawa's books. There's a lovely autobiography called something like an autobiography. <laughs> He's written a book, then then all, all the Kislowski on Kislowski, Scorsese on Scorsese. And um, so I think the seed was born there yeah. somewhere. Okay. And uh, then uh, when there was a body of work, uh, I thought I should write about, before this one had done a book on Rangde Basanti, but that was a screenplay. It was purely for cinema students, uh, not for a, a larger diaspora as such. Um, so I started writing uh, along with Rita Ji uh, about my movies. We used to have long conversations. And more often than not, the movies got connected with my life, with my childhood or my growing up years, um, going to Air Force school, so make 21 crashes, so rang de basanti. Um, my parental homes are in Old Delhi. I was born and uh, brought up in Old Delhi, so Delhi 6. Uh, closeness to sports, national stadium, uh, growing up listening to the horror stories of partition on both sides. Uh, so, Bhag Milka Bhag, um, as such. So, it kept going back and forth to uh, my college days, uh, my growing up years, and um, how Mandal Commission had impacted me, how Tiananmen Square had impacted the uh, entire world as such. So, uh, it somehow became what it became, uh, very organically. And uh, I never thought that it will be, uh, never... Uh, dreamt it like this. So whatever it is, for good or bad, that's how it turned out. Yeah. How did you decide to collaborate with Rita? What uh, Rita Ji, and how did it uh, work out? What was your process like during the collaboration? Because both being creative persons, you know, and it being your story, uh, um, it was absolutely amazing. Because uh, uh, she is, uh, first of all, she is an amazing human being, uh, and uh, it was. Uh, she's extremely patient. So, uh, we would talk a lot um, and have conversations over uh, whenever the, I had a gap from shooting or from uh, something, even if uh, I would have like four hours suddenly free next day or something. And we had time. It's not that I'm so busy. Uh, I would call her and say, let's speak uh, more. And, and then uh, she would make the pointers and uh, as such and, you know, uh, write it. And then uh, I would take some things from my childhood, which only I knew, which is uh, those I would write. 
and and so it was a, a, a lovely give and take it was amazing we kept passing the bait in back and forth to each other and when finally it was taking shape uh, 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 we had uh, amazing publishers with in rupa and um, they gave me an amazing team yamni was the editor and um, uh, bena was the graphic designer and um, so visually to i related uh, very easily to her and and so we said okay let's it also be a visual experience because i am i think visually i i i don't think in words also your title your title rita has rita ji has put in a bit at the end about how it came about and it's a very tongue and cheek uh, bit about it how do you relate to the title the stranger in the mirror do you still feel that you're a stranger in the mirror and how does it fit in with it, uh, your book um, italy to be honest when we started we had a working title called interval, interval. as keyed and as hackneyed or sad it might sound <laughs> but uh, because uh, wo, my friends around me told me yaar to abhi kyu likh rahe abhi to uh, picture baki hai to to maine bola chalo interval kar dete hain iska naam fir aise karke soch ke chalte hain but as it unfolded and and as i uh, i just poured my heart out and uh, stood naked in the crossroads for everybody to see in the in the book i didn't hide anything or anything um uh, mirrors have been uh, keep popping up in my films uh, subconsciously and not just ki ek aise ho gaya it comes at a seminal moment ax my first film meant reflection uh the philosophy was good and evil are two sides of the same coin and in the pre climax there's a scene between uh amit ji and manoj where uh in his reflection he sees manoj uh, so the evil resides within him and they have a conversation and uh in bhag milka bhag when uh milka singh uh, he messes up uh, in the uh, in the olympics in melbourne and because he got digressed and he, he he could not focus you know as such and he finished like couldn't barely finish the race uh i wrote a scene where he slaps himself because the person is looking in the mirror at and he doesn't like that person i uh, delhi six was all about mirrors it was uh, in fact the music cd had uh, the cover was not a actor's face it was a, actually we embedded a mirror so if you are buying the cd those days there used to be cds uh apni shakal dekh lo usme bas to pata nahi to uh uh whatsapp uh i normally have conversations uh every morning uh in with myself uh, as such uh which is with the mirror and i always find there's somebody else whom i'm looking at it's is it's like or that is a real person and i am becoming somebody else so it's it's a great reminder uh, as such and i'm always i don't know who is the stranger the person in the mirror or the person who is standing in front so that's the confusion i'll try and solve next time yeah <laughs> so we wait for the next time for this the sequel to this hopefully book. yeah <laughs> also uh, when i'm talking about the book your structure is very interesting like your movies you're non linear in your book you've gone back and forth you've uh, maybe digressed a bit you've spoken uh, focused on the films you've had people who you've worked with talk about yourself so did this also come about organically or did you decide this is how it was going to be i i don't think life is linear for me it doesn't work like that because uh, you're traveling to work and you see something and you get reminded about something and uh, so you jump back in time when you were a kid you know you see a cricket match happening on the field somewhere to apni yaade aa jati to life doesn't work linearly uh, as such uh, also uh, after becoming a student of cinema uh, i i uh, what i found was uh, the the 
the most unique thing about cinema is editing. Okay. You see, uh, cinematography is born from photography, which was born from painting. Art direction is born from art. Uh, wardrobe and fashion has been there forever, as such. Acting has been there forever, matlab, from Natya Shats, as such. The only thing which got born after cinema was born was editing. That's interesting. Uh, That's uh, uh, interesting. As such. For, I'm talking in my limited way. I'm sure there must be other uh, uh, places. And with uh, editing, the thing is, uh, I once I did a workshop with a master editor called Walter Murch. And I in my reading days, I read a lot. He had edited Godfather and Apocalypse Now, and he's the guy. So... It was not long. It was just a five-day workshop. And then I asked him about, how do you make the cut? What's your thing? Is it, uh, you know, continuity going left to right? So you have to, somebody speaking, somebody. He said, no, I make a cut emotionally. Okay. Whatever emotionally I feel right. So a uh, lot of my technicians are absolutely, matlab, uh, they're ready to kill me because I don't shoot... Uh, as per the technique laid down mm. uh, in cinema, mm. that you know everything has to be a master shot, then over shoulder, over shoulder, two shot, all that. Jo man me aata hai, shoot karte raho, aur wo galat bhi lagega, wo sahi ho jayega. Editing table pe, because the last time a screenplay uh, of a movie, which Sitfield taught me, and uh, uh, that's a, a very interesting how I met him. I'll, I'll tell you about that, but uh, let me finish this thought. Sid also taught me the same thing. He said, like, uh, time is irrelevant when you're making cinema. It's, yeah, you are in an overall universe of time, but uh, somebody shuts a door and another door opens in another country in another time, and the audience would accept it. So you can actually transcend time. Then also what he taught me was, you know, when you're writing a novel and, and if there are a thousand readers to the novel, all thousand are imagining your story in their own way. She will imagine when she's reading in her own way. So there are thousand imaginations to the same story. Nobody is taking it in the same way. When you're writing a playwright and that unfolds in a three-act structure, it actually unfolds in front of you on the stage. And there's a direct connect with the actor there. But when you are writing a screenplay, it's actually story told in pictures. Uh, which I experimented with Mirzia. Because uh, in a 2 hour 20 minute film, 1 hour 10 minutes was silent. And it didn't work. <laughs> People are not used to silence. I, I, I hope and, and as such. And... Uh, but yeah, but it was a good experiment. I learned a lot. It was a beautiful movie. You know, there uh, is this uh, yeah. kashma kash that all creative people have, which I must ask you now since we've got two bits here and it didn't work. Whether you have to be good or you're too good to be, un to be popular or you have to be commercially successful. And what is the fine line that as a creative person, you know, Obviously, because there is so much money involved in filmmaking, the commercial part does weigh heavy. And you've been brutally honest in your book about, you know, the, how you made your films. So you make films out of passion. But in that commercial, there's been a commercial success. There's been one which hasn't done well. There's been a commercial success. There's been one which hasn't done well. So how do you deal with this back and forth thing? And how do you place yourself then as a filmmaker? Yeah. So last week I was in Delhi and uh, uh, my sister who is a principal in the school, she asked me the same question. What is your problem? If you are coming to you take a good actor and you make a film and you just make a hit. So, <laughs> 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 yeah, and, and, uh, and there is no doubt she loves me and cares for me. So, uh, she wants to see her brother just giving hits after hits and so I asked her, Ki, yaar, Mamta just tell me Ki, your favorite five films. 
and uh, so she said guide i love guide very much and uh, and she named her films the one she loved <clears throat> so i asked her so uh, a uh, your films one is uh, made in 1960 um, mother india again six, uh, late 50s then you're talking about lagan which is made in uh, like uh, 90s and all that and so uh, a you're not talking about time now please tell me was guide a box office hit or failure she said i don't know the uh, i said then why are you asking me this stupid question we can talk like that brother sister na <laughs> so he says shut up you are stupid and that's it <laughs> Okay. so for me it's like uh, cinema is about creating something which will uh, stand the test of time time so so like delhi six did roaring business on friday saturday and sunday matlab we crossed 44 crores and it was like what's going on on monday uh, it just fell like a rock we had had no clue wh- what happened and we had already had a success party <laughs> so now what to do have a unsuccessful party or what uh, party to hona zaruri hai ya yeah, jo bhi ho to uh, uh, it took me time it took me years to understand why it, so all that but then when the film released uh, many years later in channel 4 it got uh, in 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 the uk it got uh, uh, one of the maximum ratings for any hindi film so there was something going on there in that film and now as i see it's clawing back slowly but surely uh it's not dead it hasn't even plateaued so it's growing slightly so it's it's a, a slow starter uh, but i i think it will win the race time I'm sure it will definitely, and you've been brutally honest in the book about how, what you went through after Delhi Six, yeah. and uh, these are things that takes a lot of courage to put out there, especially in a memoir. So, when writing the memoir, were there times when you felt that maybe I should filter this out, maybe I should, you know, put this, or no. n- never? No, I never thought. And. Uh, was there things that you put in and then took out by any chance because you felt that maybe not right now maybe later these are this is something i want to talk about later no not really i i kept pouring my heart out and uh, that's the way i make movies it would be like double standards to write a book differently and make movies differently and it's uh, and that's how all my friends are my relationships are so yeah they all know me that he is quite useless iska kuch nahi ho sakta Yeah. useless is quite a strong term to use <laughs> but uh, no what i want to know is this book is not just a memoir it's also a documentation for about your filmmaking about your process about how each movie was made how you got your actors on board how the music was created all that has gotten to us so when a aspiring filmmaker or a film student or someone reads this what would you like them to take away from this book who am i to tell them matlab it's up to them whatever they feel like uh, as such if at all they get to read it and pick it up and uh, uh, it's it's uh, i have learned that from uh, so uh, kapola was casting for apocalypse now and so this is what i read in uh his book which was written by his wife elena kapola and in fact uh he made apocalypse now and it started with a certain budget and the budget went tenfold uh everybody was saying ye to matlab aap socho ki wahan ki mughle azam aur shole mila ke ek film ban rahi hai to pura crew wahan pe gaya hua hai philippines mein indonesia mein shooting vietnam helicopters are flying and the film tanked but before that when he was casting for the film he knocked at every door uh, for the casting of the film and he wanted to cast steve mcquinn he wanted to cast matlab and he was 
Francis Ford Coppola who had made Godfather. You know, he was not a small name. And uh, everybody kept lying to him or refusing. Kisi ne bola, yaar, I'm taking a break. Steve McQueen told him, actually, I'm in a lot of pressure. I've film a lot of Abhi main ek saal ka break lena chahta hu. Next thing you know, Steve McQueen is shooting for his next film after a week. So he had some 11 Oscars or something, which he had won, Academy Award for Godfather and other stuff and all that, many of them. So he just took them to his window, he was in an apartment, he threw them all out on the street and they all broke. And his wife later collected it uh, from Jobi Tuta Futa Mila Usne Rak Liya. So, when something like that can happen to Francis Ford Coppola, you learn that you, and still he made Apocalypse. And, and so you learn that he has created such a cinema. And the most interesting thing is that after 25 years, when he released the Redux, and uh, it became a huge hit. And it's a legendary film today, it's a classic. Yeah. So you learn this, you say you, you, you keep following your instincts, your passion and it will happen. So that gives you the courage. So that's what I took out of his uh, stuff. Yeah. So hopefully those who read this will find their own messages and their own path. Most of it, yeah. Definitely. What I really find fascinating about your journey is that you've come from Delhi. You were the proverbial outsider to the business so far and you put in your years in advertising, learned on the job. It wasn't something that you studied at film school or, you mm -hmm. know, as, as you mentioned here. Did you, do you think your years in advertising gave you an advantage to not knowing how films needed to be made and doing your own thing? How did it work for you? Formulaic films. Yeah. You know, on the contrary, it worked against. <laughs> yeah. Because in advertising, you're, when you're making ad films or creating ads, you're under the umbrella of something called marketing. Okay. You're actually selling a soap or a motorcycle or adding emotions into it or a shampoo or Maggie noodles or Pepsi or Coke. And that becomes like your universe, how to sell this, how to do that. When you shift to movies, it's about... Uh, uh, emotions is about something else altogether. It's much more basic. It's much more visceral. It's matlab um, baal aap shampoo mat karo, to koi aisa kuch nahi hoga. Aapko koi kala kutta ke kaatega nahi. Ki aapne aaj baal shampoo nahi ke bahu bahu and I'll bite you. But if uh, your emotions are triggered in the wrong way in your relations, your relationships to your loved ones or the hated ones or your friends, your enemies to the universe. It You can't sleep. It, it changes your the way you are as a person. It is very internal. Okay, let me, now that I'm speaking to you, I'm realizing that it's, it's very inside you. It is what makes you. A shampoo doesn't make you. So that's the difference, if I'm able to say, between filmmaking and, yeah. That's a very, very interesting perspective, of course. And uh, I was very curious, because uh, in this book, there, when you, you came into Bombay uh, and you were uh, doing your advertising and uh, you just went up to Gulzar on a whim, that's the, uh, that's the bit about how you first met Gulzar, and you said, I want to make Devdas. And of course, you, Devdas didn't get made. Would you still want to make Devdas? Yeah, sure. It's an evergreen piece of literature. And uh, why not? Yeah. Actually, I wanted to meet Gulzar Bhai. Devdas Bhana tha. Okay. So, uh, to. But, uh, Achha Bhana tha. Sabko ab Achhe Bhane chahi hote. To, uh, kisi tarah mein unki... Uh, I uh, I don't know, I bribed the watchman, I went up to his building, I met Kuti Saab, opened the door. Kuti Saab looks after Gulzar Bhai's work for donkey years, forever. It's like, if, uh, it's, it's like, first thing you see is Kuti Saab. Now, now he's uh, retired and much deserved. 
uh, I said, I have an appointment with Guzar Bhai and he said, no, you don't. I said, no, no, it's not. You don't know. You can check in diary. He said, I write in diary and there's nothing in it. So, I said, please write it again, please. <laughs> and I think I said, uncle, write it again. <laughs> so he must have thought, I am not so uncle, nahi hun, but I will write So I waited for some time, then Guzzar Bhai called me in and uh, he was like, there was a halo behind him. He was sitting against the window and uh, I was shaking from inside, outside, everything. And he said, Haan, bolo. Uh, so I said, uh, will you write Devdas for me? And I had taken the book and I actually wanted him to write it. Uh, so, uh, so he said, "Acha bad jao, chai pi hoge." Ki ye koi aaya hai. So then he asked me. We spoke about the take on Devdas. He said, "You know, I also started making Devdas with Darbinder and Hema Malini, but after ten days, it folded. It's not an easy film to make. I realized it was not for me. Why do you want to make it?" I said, because I've seen Segal Saab, uh, Devdas, uh, you know, uh, PC uh, Barwas, and I've seen Bimal Roy's Devdas with Dilip Saab. But I've always felt that uh, they got the story wrong after reading the book in the postscript. The author, it was an adolescent boy who fell in love with a girl or lady who was elder than him. And when it didn't work out, he couldn't handle it. He became an alcoholic and he died. With that, still uh, keeping the love in his heart. So he said, bang on. Actually, maybe the hero should have been younger because, you know, but our here, it doesn't happen. The hero is younger, the hero is bigger, so it doesn't happen. The age difference is not the story. So I said, no, Paro was definitely... Uh, a, uh, as, as, as the author wanted, she was older and far more matured than him. And she could handle the situation, he could not. She could handle the heartbreak, he could not. And he didn't even have the courage to face her, the love. Because when she was getting married and he was going crazy, one night before the marriage, she comes to his room, locks the door and says, let's run away. And he didn't have the courage to uphold that. So I said, Wo hota hai, wo. Uh, pyar mein I always feel it's the, it's, it's the, the fairer sex who has more courage, not the man. And so he liked the idea. He said, Achha, theek hai, to likhte hai, phir kaise karoge, matlab, who's, is gonna, you know, you need money to make a film. I said, Achha, jab paise honge, mein aata hu aapis. <laughs> so, 25 years later, he gave me Mirzia. And, 25 years later. <laughs> yeah. And so, I told him, you know, Guzar Bhai, you remember 25 years ago, somebody came to you and he wanted you to write a film and um, he said, Bachchu, wo uh, daadi badane se ye thodi hai, main, main tumhe pechanunga nahi. <laughs> and what a lovely film he gave you. Yeah. Among another film that I know was very close to your heart is Samjota Express. Mm. And uh, it didn't get made. Would you want to make it now? Would you go back to it? It sounds like a fascinating story, the little that I've read about it in the book. Yeah. And you lived it for over a few years. <laughs> oh, it's quite a complex one. It was the first film I wanted to make. Yeah, and uh, I'd worked on the script. Uh, actually, Kamlesh Pandey had uh, uh, who had also written the story for Rangde Basanti, did, uh, and we had worked together. He, he had uh, uh, written Samjata, and I even remember going to A.R. Rahman that time. He even composed something for me uh, as such. And uh, both uh, was to be my first film, uh, Abhishek's first film, uh, uh, Abhishek Bachchan and we both uh, spent a lot of time on it. We were both young and we had the blessings of all the elders. He even maintained a diary 
डे ऑन डे हम अपना ही ट्राई करते रहते थे तो उसको मैंने बोला एक डायरी लिखते हैं जिसमें तो अपने कैरेक्टर रोज क्या सोचता है वो लिखता जा सो ही मेंटेन द डायरी फॉर अ गुड सिक्स सेवन एट मंथ्स आई डोंट नो हाउ लॉन्ग एंड एवरी डे डेलीजेंटली वो ड्राइट की हसन सर रहती आज ऐसे सोचता है बट द नी द मूवी वॉज नॉट अलाउड टू बी मेड इट्स नॉट दैट इट डिन गेट मेड द सिस्टम काइंड ऑफ प्रिवेल्ड ओवर अस एंड वी डिन नो हाउ टू हैंडल दैट एज सच so the hero was in the opening scene he kills some indian commandos he is a terrorist a pakistani terrorist and at the end of the film is uh, he he sacrifices his life or whatever there's a and his body is going back on samjhauta express and the both the fathers he had come to get his father who was languishing in a jail and that's where the hatred started as a mistaken identity His father is called Liaquat, and Liaquat tells uh, Vijay Deshmukh, who is an inspector, who shot the son, and Vijay had become like a father-son relationship with her son, okay. and he was actually lying to him as a India Today editor, uh, and known as Rohit Srivastava or something. Okay. So uh, लियाकत से यू नो जब तक हम दोनों मुल्कों के बीच में ये नफरत की खाई रहेगी हम इन्हें अपने बच्चों की लाशों से भरते रहेंगे और वो कभी भरेगी नहीं दैट वॉज द फिल्म सो जब वो नहीं बन पाई और नहीं बनी कि यार अभिषेक की पहली फिल्म है यू नो हाउ द माइंड थिंक एंड एंड हाउ पीपल हु एडवाइज ऑल अराउंड और उसमें वो हिल प्ले अ पाकिस्तानी टेरिस इट्स सो एंटी नेशनल वो कोई एक्सेप्ट नहीं करेगा ऐसा वैसा मेरे को सब ने बोला ये तू क्या कर रहा है तू देवदास बना ले कुछ और कर ले <laughs> तो uh, वो सब वो सब हुआ और वो बनी नहीं तो आई डोंट थिंक आई मेक इट है and the relevance of that story 22 years ago jahan hum bolte the ki padosi mulk ek samuday ke log matlab ye nahi bolte the hindu muslim ladai kar rahe hain ya wo pakistan hai ya hindustan hai and equally we are like equal villains for each other absolutely this whole rhetoric about they are bad and we are like wow is i cannot accept that that that's not how the the world works it's not uh, you all if you go on the other side of the fence it's the other story yeah it's always who's looking back at you yeah yeah and we see this in your movies also of course delhi six we see it in bhag milkam bhag where this entire uh, rang de basanti of course huge acts the whole thing about the other the othering of the gays it's constantly there it's constantly i think quite a strong lead motif in most of your movies a very interesting anecdote since you mentioned kamlesh pandey was uh, the one where you spoke to young uh, the youth in different cities yeah and uh, you know rebels without a cause do you still think i mean you made rang de basanti 15 years ago there's a lot that's happened since this been the ca and dca movements there's been a lot of uh, the universe children from the universities have protested a lot of things have happened since then do you think the youth have a cause today do you think uh, they are still purposeless as they were when you did that uh, survey or that uh, yeah so what she is referring to for the uninitiated uh, uh, my first i was making a documentary called mamuli ram the little big man which was inspired by uh, dr korean dr vargas korean i had made some ad films for amul and gone to present it uh in anand and uh, he saw he liked and then he spoke a bit about anand and then i there was i stayed back at the guest house and he said will you have chai and all and we got speaking and we had dinner also and then i stayed there for 6 months to make the documentary as such so kamlesh used to come he was writing the documentary it was about the milk movement and it uh, uh, shambhu had already made manthan Uh, but i realized the real heroes were the uh, the mamuli rams they are the guys who employed vargas korean uh, tribhuvan das and all that um so ab you are staying in anand which is a village there is nothing around you so what do you do in the evenings 
there is no downtown you don't can't go out so me and kamlesh used to just jam on poetry and we found a common love in sahir and uh, nazrul islam तो वो एक सुनाते थे कविता में एक मैं सुनाता था उनको उनकी वो मेरे को शायद दस सुनाते थे तो मैं आधी सुनाता था उनकी नॉलेज इज समथिंग एल्स ऑल टुगेदर एंड वी बॉन्डेड ऑन दैट एंड आई सेट लेट्स मेक यंग ऑफ इंडिया ना ऑन द आर्म रेवोल्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया वे स्टार्ट इन नाइनटीन नाइनटीन एंड पीक एट नाइनटीन थर्टी थ्री राजगुरु सुखदेव वॉक टू द गैलोज एंड आई hit the spot with him and uh, realized that they are his favorite characters also so we researched he wrote a lovely script called, and that time we named it the young ones of india and it was starting with kartar singh saraba who threw the bomb earlier and then uh, bismil ashakulla khan then the bridge of chandrashekhar azad and then, then bhagat singh rajguru sukhdev jatin uh durga bhavi and uh, all these guys were young the average age when they died for the country was 23 and a half so i realized that ye to aur bhi baatein karte honge yaar ye to uh, why did they leave the pen and picked up the uh, the gun as such then we read about the philosophy it was amazing it was very deep like bhagat singh said i don't want independence uh, uh, from the goras to be enslaved by the kalas and this is exactly what his prophecies come true as such all that all that all that we did the script amazing uh, idea young guns of india was i wa- i told him i want to make it like billy the kid you know like really cool film and all that not with slow motion bhagat singh and all and not definitely not singing songs um वो हो रहा था तो बोला चलो अभी एडवर्टाइजिंग से आए हैं तो स्क्रिप्ट को टेस्ट करते हैं सो वी गॉट अ ग्रुप ऑफ यंगस्टर्स इन अ प्लेस लाइक दिस इन मुंबई इन परेल आई रिमेंबर इन अ होटल एंड आई स्टार्टेड स्पीकिंग अबाउट द फिल्म टोल्ड एम अ लिटिल मोर एंड दे रिजेक्टेड द आइडिया कंप्लीटली एंड दैट टाइम दे वर कॉल्ड द एम टी वी जनरेशन फॉर सम रीजन uh their aspirations of going to america wearing the nike uh, you know what what are you uh, who are you dating and all that all that i said ye bombay ke youngsters bahut uh, they want to be millionaires before they are 25 let's go back to delhi where i belong thoda dil wale se baat kare dil wahan pe to 5 minute mein unhone reject kar diya are char bhagat singh ban rahe hain aap panchvi bana rahe ho kya kar rahe ho matlab ye koi film mein nahi hogi aur ek ne bola wo kirti azad ka grandfather was chandrashekhar azad aise chhati thok ke bola usne ki mere ko sab malum hai to yaar maine kaha ye to ye kya ho gaya yaar kamlesh ji so we went into depression for 3 days and uh, 3 days later uh, he said i can't leave this thought let's turn it around on his head and i said these guys are not relating to the youngsters of uh the early 20s so we need to see them on screen they have to see themselves and then we'll take them for a journey and the plot point of uh the mig aircrafts came because migs were crashing and i happened to see a documentary on ndtv called uh, coffins and tricolor and the planes were crashing and the then defense minister i think it was george fernandez he wore a g suit and went to ambala and took a joy ride on a mig 21 and declared they are safe hai safe nahi hota main thodi ispe jata tha to man kiya ki usko goli se uda do to you can't do that but film mein to maar sakte hain so we did that in the movie uh i kept talking to kamlesh you know like this only like i'm talking to you and he kept listening intently kamlesh pande being kamlesh pande in within a week he turned it around and he gave me a new story line which is the documentary filmmaker kam she wants to make a documentary on the young revolutionary but nobody is interested because bbc tells her ki make a documentary on gandhi gandhi says so so does she gavara who are these guys azad and all that nobody and which also came from when i was researching uh, uh 
the um, the revolutionaries at the uh, at the uh, at the library at the British Council Library in Paddington. They have a huge library, three floors. One whole floor is to India and Oriental. And there you can go on the computer and say, I want this, 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 this. And this lady would come with a huge trolley and leave you with things. There's 16 mm films, 8 mm films. There are photographs from the Raj. You know, they used to take back. So it's amazing the way they preserved everything. I kept searching for Bhagat Singh, Chandra Shikhar Azad. Finally, I got a thin book after seven days of researching. Where they were called terrorists. Ki ye terrorist tha, ek Alfred Park mein mara, ek ne bomb bomb feka tha, usko humne hang kar diya. So one country is revolutionary, the other country is terrorist. And we see that reflection happening within our country. And we've seen that unfold in Kashmir so many times. And uh, so uh, he turned the idea around and then he gave this and then I sharpened the screenplay and then Renzel came from my advertising days, he was an advertising copywriter and he said, Yeah, Rakesh, dialogue baji kyu karte film mein itna sab? And why can't they talk like we are talking? I said, to fir dialogues aisi lik. So he wrote the dialogues beautifully, he sprinkled gold dust onto it. And so that was the journey of the script, yeah. That's a lovely story, how it began all in a village in Gujarat. And how it became Ragde Basanti. I think we're completely out of time. Thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. And all the very best for the book and for what's coming up next from you. I would love to see a book that talks about your process. So if you're ever considering writing that, please do. And uh, thank you so much for your time. No, no, thanks for the idea. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>